What I'm asking is, what are the chances for a foreigner to come to Turkey with no network, no ties in the, you know, the municipalities or the government and etc. And really be able to identify what is the future of the city going to be and invest accordingly, buy a land and expect it to appreciate. So yes, Al, it is it is a really low chance for a foreigner to actually, you know, seize that opportunity you know Correct. have the yeah. connections as of a local would have and go to the point reach to a point saying oh yes this is fairly truly an amazing investment opportunity Hello and welcome to another episode of Straight Talk. Uh, in this one, we're here with Kajin. Hello Kajin, there. Bullet, the Bullet Kajin. Um, he is the head of Property Turkey's premium department. And in that premium, we're actually, uh, he focuses on the lands as well. So a lot of you guys have been asking about us, asking us about, uh, you know, that you want to buy your land and b build your own place in Istanbul. Um, you know, there's there's no one better to talk about it uh, than Kaj in here. So, Thank Kaj, you. lands, big topic. Right. And there's a huge demand for lands in Istanbul. 20 million city, right? And it's pretty much built up. Where are those lands and where does the prices start from? I know this is a very generic question, but it please is. do your best. All right, okay. Let's summarize within a few op um, topics. Okay. Al. First of all, uh, the most important part, lands are you know, considerably divided to three sections. Mm -hmm. One of them is basically for investment purposes only. One of them is building your own house or your own villa on top of it. And the other perspective is, is for commercial usage. Okay. So if we distinguish this three aspect, we come along within a perspective of saying, uh, there are options in the market, yes, that's for sure. There is investment-wise some opportunities that you don't have a zoning permission, mm -hmm. which the status of the land is currently considered field, which is tarla mm -hmm. status, mm -hmm. whereas you, the opportunity there is that you buy it really, really below the market price mm -hmm. with an investment value, all right, and that you wait the land to get a permission from the municipality with the upcoming years or the municipality will open that region zoning planning permission mm -hmm. zoning permission within the few years right mm -hmm. in investment is as rock solid as a property when it comes to lands okay it's undeniable okay it is an ancient um investment model mm -hmm. it's 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 a, it's an investment model which is done for thousands of years, right? Correct. They used to sell land ag against a uh, few shepherds or few uh, goods or, you know, uh, or food or, or whatever the, 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 wood, the, the case would be. <laughs> now, now, now you're going into very the um, you know, ancient uh, traditions of real estate purchases and etc. Absolutely, yeah. which is but, 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 a very but, well common practice. Correct. But now what I want from you is that to tell my audience that is it really feasible? I mean, buying a land in Istanbul and waiting, keeping it for 10 years and waiting for it to appreciate. I mean, let's, let's, let's face this fact, right? I mean, in Turkey, you have a lot of investors, Turkish investors, and these guys are connected deep within the municipalities. These guys uh, are, are land hunters. Land hunters. They hunt yeah. land. Okay, so what I'm asking is, what are the chances for a foreigner to come to Turkey with no network, no ties in the you know the municipalities or the government and etc and really be able to identify what is the future of the city going to be and invest accordingly buy a land and expect it to appreciate i mean how feasible is that it is a really low chance for a foreigner to actually you know seize that opportunity you know have the connections as of a local would have and go to the point reach to a point saying, oh yes, this is fairly, truly an amazing investment opportunity. So, unfortunately, that is a very, very low chance for a foreigner to reach to that extent. Correct. Yeah. Right? However, what we are actually persuading, or at least if there is a land investor, we advise 
to for, to do so if that is that uh, a land with a zoning permission where there is everything net and clean and that the investor immediately act on the land right so in istanbul there are certain regions that actually opens zoning permissions in times of the year during the year mm-hmm. all right for instance let's give an example where you live in zekeriakoy yeah so zekeriakoy area belongs to sariyer municipality, municipality yeah. so zekeriakoy actually the zoning permissions comes within every two years mm-hmm. all right so let's say i buy the land there and i ideally want to build a villa standalone villa for my family I buy the land for a cost of, of I don't know, two, three million lira. Mm-hmm. All right, let's say four hundred thousand dollars, and I wanted to make a, a, another spend another four hundred to make myself on a very good villa. Right, mm-hmm. I have to wait, Al, for two years or a year for my planning permission to be approved by the municipality. Okay. All right. When the municipality opens the zoning permission, there is a huge demand that everybody tries to submit their project that only 5% gets the permission out of it. That's the zoning permission side. Then you've got the 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 the, the pl- planning permission which is your project planning, right? You need the approval from the municipality for that. That doesn't take the, in that extent time lap. It will like, require two three months maximum to get every paperwork done and boom start the construction so but zoning permission inside istanbul if you'd if our audience can see a map right now of uh, istanbul zoning permission depending on locations like buk chekmeje area to uh, anatolian side of chekmeko region to sariyar district these areas they come and go. They open for a certain time of period and they close the planning permission, the zoning permissions, and you have to wait. Who, Which location, and this map has the best opportunity currently, is more likely Buk Chekmeja. The Buk Chekmeja location is more likely mm-hmm. to have cost-effective, ready plan, ready with, with the permits and everything, lands, as opposed to uh, locations like Sariyash or parts of Anatolian side mm-hmm. right so there are amazing places yeah. yet to discover on Anatolian side yeah. for the lands Al that you can build your own property on it mm-hmm. so uh, th- this is the main idea I guess that um, there are some sides of locations which are currently really really attractive with the planning permission. Okay, let me ask you another thing, Dan. Um, when we talk about um, land, we're really talking about, uh, when we talk about the prices, we'll be talking about the per meter square prices. Is, is there an average um, for uh, those areas that Absolutely. you're talking about? Is it standard across the board or is it like per land basis? <laughs> What's the situation? Yes, there is a you know square meter pricing in terms of the lands, but... It's an open free market, Al. So um, everybody thinks that they own the best possible land, mm-hmm. most fruitful land. So everybody has its own price set. But pretty much, give or take, it's pretty much the standard. So any anywhere between... If I talk about Bukchek Major region, let's begin with that. Bukchek Major is a huge district. Of I mean, course, yeah. Audiences will be seeing it, of course, but yeah. from the maps as well... But um, it is a huge dist- it's a district. So anything between 800 lira to 1,800 lira per square meters is the actually standard um, and feasible prices. 800 lira? Per square meters up to 1,800 lira. Okay. okay. Yeah. Although That's pretty affordable if you ask me. For example... An 800 lira per square meter, which is around $110 per square meter, yeah. right? $110 of square meter price will, of course, have, you know, be more 
inner of Buick Check Measure. Maybe being, not with a view. Not with a view, but at least a surrounding of some neighborhood or maybe some field, open fields. But yet you still have your land there, which you have got your planning and, and the zoning permission where you can start your construction with. Yeah. And um, the 1,000 caliber, the 1,000 lira and above caliber um, lo- lands over there, quite most most of them are, are does does ex- does have the 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 sea view and the nature with it and the surrounding with it. So this is estimated price range in that region. Asian side and Italian side is again yet to be discovered. Yeah, still within the same price range. Zekiriaku Saria district, which is more closer to Bosphorus, I'm not even mentioning that because it's yeah. maybe triple than what it is. So this is pretty much it. And yeah, were you going to say something? And the planning permissions mostly are 20 to 40. So your constructible infrastructure square meters is around 20% of the land. In the Bosphorus or in? Mostly in Bukchek Major region, okay. and uh, pretty much some sides of Bosphorus. That was actually well. going to be uh, my next question. Let's say that in one of those outskirts in, let's say, Bukchek Major or Beylik um, you know, the, the western parts of the city, uh, let's say that we end up buying a thousand meter squares of a land, which is actually a, you know, a normal sized land uh, for most of those places over there. Uh, thousand squares of a land, thousand, thousand square meter of a land. What are we looking at in terms of um, building? How much of it can be used as the building? How much of it should stay as the green area, the garden? What's the ratio? We're talking about an estimated 1,000 square meter of a land, right? Yeah. So to be very simple, that from 1,000 square meter, you can construct 20% as your property. 20%. 20%. So this 20% is the closed area. That is correct. Which means that 200 meters squares of a place. For a floor, one floor. For so that's the floor. footprint, ideally. Okay. That's the footprint, 200. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's say that I can build two floors. Two and a half. Some some sorts, some locations, some municipalities allow three and a half floors. It depends on the location. So that you have to multiply it, whatever the floor is. Okay. So but, but but you're yeah. generally looking at twenty percent of the land. That is correct. Yes. Okay. So so that is where um, the the building sits, right? Yes. So correct. whatever then the regulation is, how high you can build, you just multiply it with the number of the floors. Correct? That's correct. Yes. Okay. Now, lastly, Kajin, what would you say that the best u- usage of the land is for the investors? What, what should they do? Should they buy it, wait for it to appreciate? Or really and truly, land in Istanbul, this day and age, is a really a you know consumable uh, type of a you know real estate. You buy it, you use it, which means that you put you, you build on it, and you know build your own place and live with it. What is a best characterization standardization for lands in Istanbul? Oh, we there are there are few specifications about this. If you're looking for your lifestyle purchase where you're going to actually build your dream home or the home that you ideally call yes this is the place that i would live Mm -hmm. that's something else of course right if you're looking for an investment perspective yes it is al it is absolutely because you first of all are purchasing a land a piece of land in a such metropole called istanbul with a 20 21 million population of a city Correct. Right? So it is a valuable thing, Al. And depending on the location, if you play smart, you acquire really, really interesting deals. So you're saying there's a there's a potential in the land landscape. Of course. I do know, right? in fact, I do know many foreigners which is used to the market, which is used to the dynamics that do does go for the land, specifically for the commercial, where ideally there will be a factory coming or a commercial company or a shop or whatever the field is would become and establish their, their business in. There are significant amount of foreigners that are actually looking for this scale only. 
So what's the moral of the story? The moral of the story is that if we're looking for a villa that within your own taste and design, Istanbul is the right place to buy your land and build your own. Yeah. I think if, if, if I was a land investor, I, mean, I, I don't know much about, um, you know, buying a land and, you know, making it, you know, used for commercial and et cetera. But I'm definitely positive in uh, buying a land and building your own. Not only it is going to be cheaper than buying a place that is already built, but it is also going to reflect your lifestyle. And being able to do that in a city such as Istanbul, such a metropolis, is actually um, one of the unique features of the city itself. It is absolutely. For both investment, Al, and for living. Yeah, correct. I mean, we'll be we'll be doing a few videos with you on that, right. I guess. Because that's a, I mean, that's a very, very, that is becoming ever so important right now in, in what we do. People, there are so many number of people that are coming to Istanbul looking at lands on which they can build stuff. And for us, it is crucial to have both sides of the things, right? It is crucial for us to have the lands for people who, ju who just wants lands and also the design and build section uh, that we have who want to work with us during the construction process and as well. And you're the one who is actually uh, taking care of this entire process. At least you're on the operational side of it. Yes, I am on the operational side for the Istanbul um, part. And um, Cameron's team already is in place in south of Turkey, but um, specifically for Istanbul, yes, I do allocate and, 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 and find and research. We've got a team for that, yeah. which, as I've mentioned in the previous videos, that we search for properties and that also counts for the lands as well, Al. Perfect. Okay, Kajin, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you for inviting. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm not inviting you anywhere. You, you work here. So, I mean, I just called you in. <laughs> yeah, I mean, at the end of the it's day. It's not like you have another office that you go to. I mean, we're all here. Yeah, of course we're yeah, all here. But at the end of the here. day, yeah. it's nice to be on your on your, on your your straight talk. I it's must not say, my straight talk. This is the people's straight the talk. People's Get it right. <laughs> the I must say, I must talk. say, I was a little bit, um, what do you call it? Um, stre not stressed, but a little bit uh, tensed. Tired, tensed about the idea of, you might be asking tough questions because you do ask. Well, I do. I do ask tough questions because I don't care if you work for my company. I don't care if you work for yourself. What matters for me right now is my audience and the fact that they get the information. Absolutely. This is not a marketing show. This is straight talk. Absolutely. And in straight talk, uh, you get your answers. And that's why I'm here for. Well, I'm glad if I could I give have. some. Uh, but well, I'm, I'm I would rate you... Uh, well, these are these are only my initial, you know, uh, shooting. So I'm I'm guessing I'll be more used to the You'll environment. Get used to the rhythm, right? O o o obviously, I don't expect you to be a Cameron Diggin. Of course, but, I mean uh, the one and only. Yeah, yeah, the one and only, the maestro. But but uh, look, everyone's got their own feel. Yeah, we're taking the piss. Cameron says you're taking the piss. <laughs> not again. at yeah, all. Not are. at all. No, no. Yeah, I mean, this is yeah. But yeah, we will hopefully be. Yeah, you'll more you, more. you you'll see Kajin more often. Uh, because, I mean, his portfolio is uh, being demanded more and more every single day. So um, whatever kind of topics that he has that he wants to discuss, we're going to bring it on the show. So thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one. And do not forget to follow us on Spotify. We are an official podcast now. All right. See thank you, you guys. Bye.